overcomes will be a pillar in the temple and he shall no more go out. So here we have the two pillars, Jachin and Boaz into the entry of the temple. So guys, we're continuing our series on the pillars in the temple. We had talked about the beams in the temple in the last video. And in this video, we are talking about the pillars in the temple. So, um, to he who overcomes will be a pillar in the temple. Of course, we're quoting to the church of Philadelphia, to the overcomers, that they will be a pillar in the temple of Yahweh, and they will no more go out. Now, this is amazing. We had discussed in the last video how the uh, supporting beams are trees, okay? And we can see that, you know, we have uh, uh, different types of trees. We have palm trees. And this is what it says. Um, it says in Psalm 92, verse 12, that the righteous will flourish as a palm tree in the temple of Yahweh. So there's palm trees in the temple? Yes, that's what we're going over. We saw the trees in the supporting beams, okay, as we discussed last time. Now we're talking about the righteous. So that means that the, some of the posts and the pillars are people, just as you could um, see to the promise of the Church of Philadelphia, that they would be, they would no more go out. They're, they're part of the architecture. So that's an amazing blessing, an amazing promise. So this is our fourth video, third video, excuse me. This is our third video on the different types of pillars in the temple. And in this one, we are going to, of course, tell you how many pillars there are and show you how we've come to that. How, you know, the structure of, we talked about in the first video, the promenades and the peristyles. So the kind of rows of pillars, the pillars, supporting pillars that are inside many of the buildings, a majority of them, almost all of them, with uh, minor exceptions. So guys, uh, very excited for this video. Um, very excited, as you can see in the intro, or just before here, we have uh, the stone type pillars here, as well as the wood type beams. And now let's go in and begin to show you the, the uh, full encompassing uh, pillars that we see in the temple. Okay, looking at the temple complex, we get a, an idea of the scope of the amount of pillars in almost every structure. So as we look and face the temple, we see we have an outer court, and that outer court is lined with the row of pillars that's going in front of what we call the 30 chambers. Okay, quite a few uh, pillars there. And then as we look in the inner court, we can see the king's house. It has three porches and pillars, a uh, promenade that we're looking at here, entering the scribe's chamber, which has a porch and pillars there. So these are the external uh, pillars, of course, that we can see in the north and south chambers. Okay, we have pillars inside. We have the famous two pillars uh, facing the temple. And in the previous video, we showed you in the beams of the temple, um, the trees, okay, that are supporting the house, the beams, okay, those are the internal beam structures that we see here in the north and south chambers, and those are also in the temple. So um, in our intro, it gives you a scope and sense of the uh, structure and an idea of what we're looking at when we're discussing the exciting subject, pillars in the temple. And who he who overcomes, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God? And he shall go out no more. I'll write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I'll write upon him my new name. He who overcomes will be a pillar in the temple. Now, 
This temple, of course, is the Ezekiel temple he's specifically speaking about. Because if we go to Revelation chapter 21 and we look at New Jerusalem, it says clearly New Jerusalem does not have a temple. So what pillars are they talking about if there's no temple? It says the, a pillar in the temple of oh my God. Well, we conclude that the temple it's talking about here is the Ezekiel temple and the time period it is promised to is the millennium. I'll write upon him the name of my God. Okay, so written on the pillars and the city, okay, which comes down and, they'll, and he'll write his new name. So that's the great promise, a famous promise to the overcomers, to the ecclesia of Philadelphia. Now, the concept of people being pillars in the temple is actually a common theme throughout scripture. Um, we looked in the previous video how a tree or beams are important aspects of support, support of the roof, support of the house. Uh, for example, Jeremiah, he sees an almond tree as a type of the words of Yahweh. And then he'd speak those words and they come to pass. And then Yahweh called Jeremiah an iron pillar. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And he said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Verse 18, for behold, I have made you this day a defense city, an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, the princes, the priests, and against the people of the land. It says, they will fight against you, but you will prevail. So that's the promise to Jeremiah. So we conclude that Jeremiah is the almond tree speaking the words of Yahweh, and he is the iron pillar, okay? Just like we saw that there were beams in the temple and there's pillars um, in the temple. Jeremiah is a type and shadow of these overcomers. Now, it's also the two witnesses. This is mysterious, and the reason I went through the effort to put notes like this is to just allow it to be on your screen. You can screen share it uh, and take this study and look at it more deeply. But for time's sake, what we're gonna do is show you that the two witnesses are also two trees and they are two pillars. Just like the main porch of the temple we know has two pillars, Jachin and Boaz. Those are types and shadows of the two witnesses that we know. and. The idea of the tree and the two pillars, this can be seen in Isaiah chapter six. So in the Septuagint, it says, as the terebinth tree and as an acorn, wherever shall, it shall fall, okay? Now there's actually two different trees here. The terebinth tree is actually a pistachio and the acorn is an oak. Wherever it shall fall from out of its casing, is the holy seed it is it is its pillar so here you can see the trees and uh they're being described as pillars now the reason we say the two witnesses is because in hebrew when we look at the same verse isaiah chapter 6 verse 13 the word is mastaba uh, it's a similar word in arabic uh it means a pillar or a monument um and in Hebrew, it's mentioned twice, and there's two trees, as you can see, who with the, um, a, a teal or oak tree, uh, as an oak, and you can see there's two different Hebrew words for uh, teal tree or oak tree, who in Shalaketh, okay, or to cast um, a pillar, mastaba, uh, in the seed holy, and we get the word mastaba once again, pillar. So we get the word tree twice and we get the word pillar. Now we know this is the temple because the word shalaketh here is part of the uh, West Temple Gate. You see that in First Chronicles 26, verse 16, the shalaketh gate that was towards the West, okay? 
Therefore, the pillar in the temple is also a tree. But we say the two witnesses here because Isaiah is a type and shadow of the two witnesses um, as he receives the coal which purges the iniquity. So what do we learn? There are trees in the temple. Um, there are pillars in the temple. See, he who overcomes will be a pillar in the temple. And the idea of pillars in the temple runs throughout the New Testament and the pillars of the apostles. And second, uh, excuse me, Galatians chapter two, verse nine shows that the pillars, stylos in the Greek, um, which are to stiffen a post, it's a support. And there are pillars to the ecclesia. And when James, Cephas or Peter and John, who seem to be pillars, perceive the grace that was given to me. Okay, so here we conclude that there are four pillars, including the Apostle Paul, to the Ecclesia, to the church. And the Ecclesia is the house, and it has pillars. We see 1 Timothy chapter uh, 3, verse 15. The Ecclesia is the house that we must return to. Uh, how you ought to return. Uh, now, King James says behave, but if we really look at this word anastrepho, it means to return. Okay, how you ought to return yourself to the house of God, which is the ecclesia, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. Okay, so these are uh, themes of pillars in the temple, uh, pillars of the apostles, uh, making it clear that what Christ is promising is a understood theme. So people are trees, people are pillars in the temple. And another amazing verse is uh, several in the Psalms, but we go Psalm 144, verse 12. ESV does a much better job than this in King James, so we're using it. Our daughters are like corner pillars, okay, cut for the structure or pattern of the temple. Okay, the word temple, it, it says palace in the ESV, but if you go to Hebrew, it's hekel, and hekel means temple. Psalm 92, verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Okay, they'll flourish like a palm tree. And what we'll do in when we finish this, the... Um, Slides here, we'll go and we'll take a look at the palm tree inside the gates. So this, the, the psalmist is singing prophetically of the actual architecture of the temple. Extraordinary. So the righteous flourish as a palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of Yahweh. They flourish in the courts of our God, okay? So we saw that there's pillars in the courts, there's pillars in the temple, and some are like a palm tree. The in interior is decorated with palm trees. And we actually have some of the posts and the pillars. They actually are designed to look at palm trees. We have a couple palm branches right behind us, you see. <laughs> um, Psalm 1, he shall be like a tree planted in the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. His leaf shall not wither. Isaiah 61, verse 3. In the ESV, uh, to give you a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called the oaks, okay, or the trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh, that he may be glorified. Okay, continually showing us that people are trees in the temple. Now, let's take a look at counting the pillars. <laughs> um, we'll start with the outer court. And as we showed you the overview of the temple complex, um, we know that there's uh, 30 chambers and this is the outer row. Okay, when we say 30 chambers here, we're just counting the pillars in front of the building, but it is a peristyle. So it, it's the circular row that goes around, but just the pillars that are in front of the buildings in the 30 chambers is 170. 
Uh, then we have gates. So there's gates as well in the outer court and in the inner court. But here we're going to give you the total of the pillars and the gates. So this is what we were talking about earlier. Um, the righteous shall flourish as a palm tree. Okay, they'll flourish as a palm tree. In what? The house of the Lord. Well, that's exactly what you see here. You see uh, the gates. And inside the gates are decorative palm trees that are pillars, supports. The righteous will flourish as a palm tree in the house of the Lord. <laughs> so yes, it's so amazing. So amazing when you do this project to find all the imagery and symbolism throughout Scripture, just fulfilling His word constantly. So that's the interior of the gates where we have four palm trees on the inside. And then there's uh, two on either side in the porches. So all of those are decorative palm trees in the porches and in the inside of all the gates, giving us a total of 48. Okay, there's a space between the 30 chambers. So we counted the pillars that were in the 30 chambers, and there's spaces, and there's a peristyle, which we call the whole row of chambers so but we didn't get all of them okay so we got to count the spaces there's a total of 30 pillars in the spaces okay so we have to add that up then we have in the outer court in the four corners we have boiling houses and the boiling house is described as a court and the structure is held up by uh, 14 pillars or posts which you see here then it has a, it's a court within a court so the structure is a court, and it has around it another court of supporting pillars. And so there's 14 in the structure of the building, and then there's 19 in the court that's around the building. Okay. The boiling house has a total of the building in the court, 33. Then there's four of them, so that gives us 132. So you can see it begins to add up when we look at Okay, well, actually, how many pillars are there? Okay, the temple porch has the two famous pillars, J.J. and Boaz. Then in the uh, Holy of Holies here, we have 12. Or excuse me, uh, the Holy Place, we have 12. In the Holy of Holies, we have six. And then we have uh, the space that's for the side chambers, and there are 15 Um in the space that's running lengthwise, and in the back, there are six. So that's going to give us a total of 56 pillars in the temple itself. Uh, we have the two outer ones, and then, as we showed you in the previous video, the beams in the temple. And then we have the beams in the north chamber and then the south chamber, and there are two rows of 15. So the north chamber would have 30 chamber would have 30 that's going to give us 60 total uh, behind that north chamber and the south chamber and in front of the scribe chambers a promenade of 14 pillars which you see here and so this here would be the north chamber and then there's a row of columns that leads to the scribe chamber and that's going to give us a total of 28 scribe chamber on the inside has 12 um, the three main supporting ones, and then there's eight um, beams, and then there's another one, which is the circular spiral staircase, giving us a total of 48 pillars in the two scribe chambers. We have an S here. Then the king's house has three porches, and that's what we're illustrating here is the porches. And on the inside, there is six rows of six pillars. That's going to give us 36 in the porches and 36 pillars in the inner uh, area, 72 total. All right, so how many pillars do we have in total throughout the whole complex? Ah, started to come on the screen. Okay, the gates are 48, 30 chambers, 170. The boiling house is 132. The spaces between the 30 chambers, 30. The temple has 56. North and south chamber has 60. 
Scribe's Chamber, 48. Uh, Promenade has 28. King's House has 72. Giving us a total of 644 pillars. The he overcomes will be a pillar in the temples. So we're not saying this is exactly right. <laughs> um, I've gone over this many times to make sure I've counted correctly. And I made mistakes and I, I hope I still don't have mistakes, but I may. But we're not saying that our temple is exactly perfect and that these are the exact number of pillars. We're just following the instructions. We're putting pillars where it says to put them. It doesn't say to put them. And this is what we came up with. So isn't that amazing? He who overcomes will be a pillar in the temple. And to think that the celebration of tabernacles waving the palm branches and that those will be palm branches in the temple, which we could see in the gates. Not only that, Christ promised that they would have the name of the Father, the name of the city, which is New Jerusalem, and his new name would be written on them. So it's like the pillars and the posts in the temple Jachin and Boaz, they had names, okay? So he will give a new name. And there are names, specific names, to not only two, Jachin and Boaz, but all the pillars will have names representing the overcomers uh, serving Alpha and Omega in the millennial reign of Christ in the millennial temple. Um, so guys, we're very excited about this promise. Um, we're excited to share the videos on the pillars. We talked about the promenades and the peristyles. If you go back to the playlist or the showcase, you'll see all of the videos and you'll, I encourage you to go back and look at some of those. We also have the um, other beams. We uh, talked about the beams in the temple, the trees, and that's what we discussed further in this video that uh, the righteous will be as a palm tree, okay, in the house of Yahweh. Isn't that amazing? So glory to his name, guys, of these marvelous promises that we can see. We have proven that the overcomers, when they are pillars, they are pillars in a temple. And they'll have the name of New Jerusalem, yet New Jerusalem does not have a temple for the lamb is in the temple. So that what is the temple to the promise of the overcomers is the Ezekiel temple. Glory to his name. So guys, thanks for watching. In this video, we are releasing on the website the temple model. Okay, so the temple uh, has not actually been posted where you can go in and look at the 3D model, but we will do that at this video. How to do that? LelandJones.com, go to the What's New section, and in that section you'll see blue, light blue highlights, and it'll say the 3D model for the various buildings. In this one, we're announcing the 3D model for the temple. So we have covered the pillars in the temple, and we will have more on the temple, of course, because we have not covered everything. But we're allowing you to go inside and see what's coming up next. So guys, thanks for watching. And all glory to the Lamb, his soon return. And in the meantime, the voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants that fear his name, both small and great.